6 of 2022 and I am back. Uh, I'm going to give this three months. The owners seem to be putting in the effort and energy and I come up with all kinds of ideas and I'm going to give them a chance and uh, hopefully we can resurrect this and get back to the old VCT. Um, now just like in the beginning of VCT, uh, I used to do two videos a week, once in the early in the week and one later in the week and that's what I'm going to, the format I'm going to uh, go with right now. And uh, so today's Tuesday, so I'll probably have another one out by uh, Friday or Saturday, uh, once every three to four days, let's expect. And I'm going to get more active. I'm going to show you the in-between trades and some of the ideas that I have. Uh, haven't been around for months, and uh, a lot has actually happened, and I want to show you um, what's happened in the marketplace. And... Uh, to give you guys an idea of what levels are key because there's a bunch of them here. This is Bitcoin, of course, our major, uh, and I've been very active in Bitcoin. Um, so going back to September, we had Do Kwan, and I thought that for sure that they were going to have him arrested and, you know, for, you, you can't just disappear with billions of dollars. And uh, this is a, it's kind of ridiculous because now you've got Sam Bankman Freed, uh, who's, it's, it's such a weird world we live in. So many things, so many things, oh my God. And uh, if people's faith in crypto has been shaken, I can understand, but the crypto itself is not the problem. It's the people who had too much money, that were too much, uh, just unstable people, just idiots. I mean, complete friggin' morons and bad ideas that circulated into the hype of crypto and have really caused it problems. But Bitcoin and Ethereum itself, not really the issue. The issue is the idiots that people believed in. And um, now a lot of people are not very comfortable with holding any funds on exchanges, and I don't blame them. Um, but, you know, there are exchanges out there with long histories. FTX was a new one. Uh, they've only been out for a few years, and there were all kinds of signs and volume back in uh, September. I'm, I'm sorry, October um, uh, of issues of, I, that I was getting reports from people back in October of uh, them having kind of uh, not getting responses from FTX, and I said, you know, don't even bother. Um, after Do Kwan, there could be all kinds of issues with. Uh, uh, these obligations. If you remember, FTX had that coin, their FTX coin. And I said, you know, and it's, it's the same thing with BNB. BNB has their coin too. And any of these exchanges that are trying to promote their coins uh, uh, to give you incentives and high interest rates and all, it's all BS. And um, it, it, that, that is the Ponzi scheme. Crypto itself is not the problem. It's the idea of people wanting to take advantage of the hype and interest in it and create their own um, coins that have no real value. And these coins should have been used uh, if they were really good accountants and people who had respect for money, just simple respect, and had good accounting procedures. But unfortunately, when you get some 20-something-year-old kids from like these Alameda and, um, you know, they're just complete, absolute idiots. Sam Bankman Free, he was just a, a, his parents, you know, the same thing with most millennials now is they, they hype them up and they think they can do whatever they want and uh, they don't teach them any discipline or, or any real world um, values. And they're just sad people. And unfortunately, when people put their money with them, look look at uh, the shark. Uh, uh, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, I can't remember. He's, he's around promoting watches. I always see him with these Rolex watches. That um, uh, you know his his taste is a little bit weird in in them. But Kevin uh, from the Shark Tank, um, this guy got. Was still believes in Sam Bankman Freed. What is he going to say? But he got took. Uh, you know, he put a bunch of money and he invested. I think he even had a tattoo or some crazy shit. Like the other guy who had a tattoo of Do Kwan 
I mean, a Bluna. I remember the wolf tattoo. What was that all about? I, anyway, I'm just going to go off and I, I could just go for hours and talk about this and I don't want to waste your time with this in the video. But there were so many instances of this that I had to go over and start um, uh, trading versus my positions. And I had to go over and hedge uh, half of my Bitcoin back when it was in October, in the October, the late October, when we were right around this double top area right up here. And we spiked all the way back up to here, but it didn't last. And then sure enough, you know, if we draw a trend line right here. We had another break of this trend line. And this was the one that really let us tank all the way down. And then the news came out shortly thereafter of uh, Sam Bankman freed up to FTX. Absolutely ridiculous. Oh, uh, eight billion dollars. I don't know where it is. I mean, seriously. And this is the same thing with Do Kwan. This was originally. I was upset about Do Kwan as you guys know from my other videos, and thought he should be in prison, and they sent out a red notice, but now, recently, we got news that the the judge is thrown out in South Korea. So the same thing with Sam Bankman-Fried, these, he, they're basically bought their governments, and they got people in the governments going over and um, protecting them. And let me repeat that, they're protecting them, just like back in 2008, man banking crisis we had in the U.S. You know, billions and billions of dollars, no big deal. You know, you can do what you want. You can be criminals if you want. No, you don't have to, uh, you, you made too much money. You, you put so much money into the Democratic Party. That's what Sam Bankman Freed has done, him and his parents. His parents were compliance officers for the SEC. It's crazy, all right? That means they, they had to actually... What what in the hell? All right, what what did they teach him? Did they send him off to boarding school? Just never paid any attention to him? Did they not teach him? You know that you have to have rules and know what that he doesn't know anything that happened with the exchange. These kids were just partying all the time with their million dollar homes in in um, uh, in the Bahamas or wherever uh, and were just dating each other from Alameda. Did you see that one girl? I mean, they look like absolute flakes. Oh my God. And there, these are the people running and they had commercials all over TV. Oh my God. I can only shake my head. Crypto is so screwed up right now, but it, it's funny in a way because it's clearing out, you know, you know, who's uh, wearing shorts and who's not when the low tide hits. So this is a good thing, you know, but it's just so friggin' and now people are very worried about where their money is and people are even scared on, on Coinbase. The exchange has been around since forever as a history, just like BitMEX. I hate to, to say that because they were attacked by the government, but they're the most stable of exchanges. Um, and I think that them being under investigation and attacked and so forth is a good thing, but they're not, they don't screw around with the money or the Bitcoin, they're, they're more disciplined. And I think that's the same case for Coinbase. But man, I, I have to agree, I have to say, man, that's scary. Um, but those are Binance, BitMEX, uh, Coinbase, so far are the only three that I have any faith in. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, all the other exchanges, I, I just, I don't, you can't trust any dare bit, any of them. I, I just don't trust them. You know, maybe the ones that are like BitMEX might be a little safer because they're just buying and selling coins and they're not doing any of these. Once you start seeing that these companies come out with coins like crypto.com, the crypto.com coin or BNB coin, start to worry. When they start coming out with their own coins, that's when you worry. And that's what's caused so much of this. And back in uh, late October, you know, before Halloween, I decided to uh, to hedge, and uh, I knew my next level down, if we got a break, was going to fifteen eight hundred, and sure enough, we did. 
and my midpoint up here again this is your three points uh, from the 21k range 15800 18,000 and now we're right in between right hovering around your um, 17k so we're going to watch what the activity is here you can see the volume has dropped off precipitously it's a dead zone so people are just waiting for the next shoe to, to drop and if we do drop guess what that next level is below as you can see it is around 1456 exact I'll have to go back and make another video I have to go through the history if you remember back in the 14,000 we ran up to this level up here so um, before we pull back uh, this is the logical level below this 15,800 is just your short term this is your major level so we have uh, your 21k up here now above that is your 24k which is a bigger level which you see right here and um, from the 24k we have 21k we have 18k we have 15,800 and then we have the 14,056 this is your major this is your major down level down here this is where I want to be a big buyer in a short term move because it's going to go all the way back up to 15,800 and probably even back up to 17k off of a quick bounce if we get some bad news maybe Gemini collapses next which I wouldn't think is the case because um, the regulations on um, uh, you know, but who knows anymore? Uh, who knows if, you know, I, I don't know the how leveraged are these companies. Uh, if they're, uh, you know, after the Sam Bankman free thing, it, it's like Doquan with the Terra, you know, but that was a disaster. Algorithmic stable points, come on. That was just stupid. Um, but well, uh, you know, so anyway, uh, this is your next level down. This is your key level here. Now, I was very active and back in October. Uh, I hedged. I uh, thought for sure we were going to go all the way back down to here, and we did. Then we ran up to 18K, perfect trade, then right back down to here and bought here. Now I'm just holding on the long side and uh, covered my hedges as we hit this number here. This 15.8 is there. there. And if we get up to here, I probably will uh, short again and target this right up to here. Um, I've done several trades in this area. My next level is down here. Uh, and I will hedge if we get back up to 18K. So I've got a bracket right here, basically. And uh, these are the two buy points. This is already gone under the 15800 on this last move here um, now we're trending across and we just got to see if there's news if there isn't any news then we'll probably just bounce around and um, not do too much but there's likely going to be news someone else is going to another one's going to fall or maybe the you know the the government won't be able to um, stop the public from saying why isn't Sam Bankman freed in prison because um, it, the, his reasoning is just crazy. And if you look at that, you'll see what I mean. But it's just insane. Anyway, all right, this video is going to be too long. Uh, I want to get to some of the other coins and some of the other things going on with the marketplace. Um, the Dow Jones, everybody's expecting this to fall. Uh, this went up to, it had a, a wedge pattern right here. And I want to show you this right here. This is in its red zone. Uh, here's its last support zone back in the 28 area, right around that. It went a little bit under here in these two points here, but then popped right back up. Uh, created this wedge pattern right here, broke it right in here, then spiked all the way back up to the top of it up here. And now it's coming all the way back down. But this is resistance. It followed this line out and touches it back up here. It fools everybody, then it breaks here. And then, you know, at the very least, we're looking for it to go short term right back to here, right back to the mid upper 31K area. 
Uh, that's all that's there. So there's plenty of downside there. This may help push us down on Bitcoin and bring us down to that uh, level down here. Let me show you. That goes all the way back down to that 14K, which is what I'd be looking for. Uh, 1456 exact that's your next level so remember these levels you get your 21k that 24 21 18 15,800 and then you have your 14,056 this is your major this is your major pivot point here this is your midterm pivot up here at that 21k that's where everything you know and then you have your 24k above that um, those are two kind of key areas here, but this is a major point right down here at the 14,056. Um, all right, now Ethereum. Now Ethereum up here, it broke through this 12,000, this uh, upper area of the 12,000 now has become resistance, traded all the way down to the $1,000 range, and then bracketed back up to here. I had trades on this as well. Um, did not think it would get so far down, but it did. It went all the way down to the thousand range down here. So this is its support point. Let's draw that as a blue line. And now this has become its kind of its resistance right up here. So this thing should probably now turn into its resistance point. And uh, it also looks like it's looking to break. Trend line here. Bitcoin is a little bit behind it, and it's just meandering. And we're going to watch to see how this reacts, because it's going to be an indicator for Bitcoin to see how it reacts on a break. And it's going to hit its break first before Bitcoin does. And you can see that here. It's kind of, Bitcoin has some time. And um, it's flattened out. It's just stuck right around that 17K. Uh, nothing pretty. Created a little scallop pattern here and then pulled right back to this point, which was its uh, starting point on the, the break of this trend line right there, which makes sense. A little W, right? Remember on the W's. And uh, now we're just holding up the 17K area. Now, um, XRP, nothing to report here. It kind of drove down to that 32 cent range, that low 32 area right down here. And popped right back up. There was all kinds of uh, movement where it back in November and October, it, it did pretty well. It was looking like it was going to break out from the 50 cent. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with this. I'm just going to hold and wait for uh, time. Time's on my side with this one. Uh, nothing goes on. It, this is probably the most non dramatic outside of the SEC with their. They're losing their case, so they're going to at some point. They're trying to delay it as much as they can um, because it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's a, a pit of destruction for them. It makes them look bad, and so they're trying to you know just bury it as much as they can in, in time. You know, try to run the clock out, and uh, that's what the SEC and the regulations are doing. Governments are in the bankers' pockets. Um, and it's so sad because they screwed people over in 2008, the banking crisis, and that's why Bitcoin was born. That's what it stood against. And uh, now they're they're trying to, you know, at some point they're, they're going to lose um, this evolution. This is the not a revolution. It is an evolution, and time. You could put you could go against evolution all you like, but in time. You know, just like women will get their rights, you know, want to complain about it in Iran, you want to be some old uh, uh, religious fanatic, you know, that's fine. But time, you know, normality of people wanting equality, uh, it's going to happen. Um, and empires die, like Russia is dying as an empire. Um, you, communism is a corrupt institution. The Chinese are at least more democratic in a way, they're capitalistic in nature. And they're pragmatic, so they're more stable than their communist ideals. But the Russians are so kleptocratic and so corrupt. It's just like a bad mafia. They're just, you know, it's just ugly to watch. But uh, that's coming to an end as well. Um, 
hopefully they'll have a democracy in the future. Uh, their people have been so abused through uh, the past hundreds of years. So um, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, other than that, I'm going to do more videos on other coins. I'm going to keep this one not forever because we're, uh, you know, I will talk about silver though. Uh, if we remember, I'm looking for silver to go up and it made its move. It went up to the 23. This is a pivot point up here. If you remember this range right up here, 2290s, just under 23. Uh, this is its resistance zone. So it's meandering between there. And if you see there's a W in it, short term, you can see. I'll draw that out for you. So we're looking for silver to pull back a little bit here. Boom, boom, boom. Let's make that red. Another one, so you can see what I'm looking at. So we're looking for this to pull all the way back down to the uh, $20 range, uh, short term overbought. And, um, you know, it, it's uh, this was the area right down here, 18 and so forth, where <clears throat> I was buying, I was telling you about it. And in the future, you know what I'm looking for? remember the past I'm looking for it to get back up to the 36 dollar range I believe that is up there and um, even higher maybe up to the 50s in the future all the way up here so anyway those are the longer range targets um, remember in an inflationary marketplace silver and gold are king uh, silver uh, is uh, makes bigger moves just out of the nature of its smaller dollar price. Uh, gold is more uh, kind of boring, I guess you'd say. Uh, but at some point, it's going to be moving all the way back up to the 2K level and above. Um, inflation is going to hit, and it's going to, with interest rates, uh, it's going to become one of those safety assets, just like I expect Bitcoin to, to flip at some point and get away from being this risk vehicle that everyone thinks it's going to be, but um, since the prices are good, you know, fantastic. But anyway, let's uh, close this one video out. Uh, I will repeat my levels over on Bitcoin. You know what I'm looking at. Uh, my next level down is your 14,056. Got orders there. Uh, right now, I'm kind of in, uh, I'm not a short, but if we get to 18K, I will start the short hedge again. Uh, my 15,800 was my prior buy point, and we hit that twice and even went under it a little bit, so that shows weakness. We created a trend line right here. If we break this trend line, as Ethereum is kind of uh, showing us that it wants to break its trend line, we're going to see how this reacts and go from there. So I'm kind of looking for that downside, and we'll uh, wait and see. So 18K, short hedge, 14.56, buy, and, um, you know, uh, I'll go on later about the uh, the Doquan and, and all of that and how this led up to uh, my faith in the crypto market not being shaken in crypto. Crypto is not the problem. The problem is the idiots running these companies. And I kind of always felt that way. They're just not competent. And it's obvious. Uh, I don't know what kind of accounting procedures they have. He said he was using memes to go over and approve things through chat. <laughs> what? Okay. What? I, uh, what, what are you going to do? It's like, the fuck? Anyway, uh, I'm back. Uh, we'll try to get all of this turned around and make VCD great again. And I look forward to doing it. I'll put in the effort and um, we'll see what happens. All right. I hope you guys have a great day. And I'll be back with some more videos and stuff on the site. And we're just going to get active. So um, good for me. Great. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.